In this video, we're going to take a look at our last section in Calc 2, which is our conic sections. Now, conic sections is a topic that you may have covered possibly a long time ago in a pre-calculus course, or it's possible maybe you haven't seen conics ever. But here's at least a very quick rundown of what conics are all about. We're going to see here, at least in this first video, now we're not going to be going into a lot of detail on conics. If you want more detail, I've included some more detailed notes up in Blackboard for you to go ahead and take a look at. But our goal here is to get a sense of what are the conic sections and very, very quickly and loosely, how do I think about graphing these conic sections? What are the equations related to these conic sections? And then we'll go through some examples and I'll tell you kind of what the expectations are for what you should be able to do with these conics. So let's take a look here at the start. Um, what we're going to start with is this double right circular cone. So you see here I have a cone with a circular base, and I kind of have it stacked one on top of the other, and they're inverted. So they form this hourglass sort of a shape. Now if I have something like this, and I imagine taking this kind of an orange plane, and I slice through that gray shape, I'm going to end up with four different possible types of figures that I could end up with. I could end up with this parabola shape, and we're very familiar with parabolas because we've dealt with parabolas for years throughout our mathematical training. Um, I can create circles if I kind of slice this perfectly horizontally. If I slice at a slant, I create what we call an ellipse or something kind of like an oval. And if I slice kind of vertically where I hit both the top and the bottom pieces, I kind of create this like double parabola sort of a shape that we create or that we call a hyperbola. So these four shapes are what we call the conic sections. And we're going to see really quickly here at least some of the different formulas that are associated with these conics. Again, please be aware this is intended to be a very, very brief overview. And so if you're looking for more detail, please go ahead and consult the more detailed notes up in Blackboard. So here we'll start with the first and the easiest of these shapes, the parabola. We know that parabolas can open up or down, but they could also open left or right. And you can see down here I have some pictures of this. So I have my green parabola opening up. Over here I have a green parabola opening to the right. If I have a parabola that's opening up or down, this is typically a formula that I can use to communicate that parabola. I have some number a multiplied by x minus h all squared plus a k. And this value of h and k are important because that tells me where the vertex of that parabola is. That is, it tells me kind of where this lowest or highest point ends up being or this furthest left or furthest right point is. Now, if it's the case that uh, my a value is positive, then I know my parabola opens up. If a is negative, it opens down. And notice that I'll get a very similar equation if this parabola is going to be opening to the left or to the right. My values of k and h kind of switch locations as well as my values of x and y. However, my vertex is still in the form of h comma k. That hasn't changed. Now, there are some other important things that occur on parabolas, specifically a, a special point referred to as a focus, and a special line that we see down here in red referred to as the directrix. Now, we're not actually going to be dealing with these this semester, um, and if you're interested, again, in more details surrounding this, please consult those more detailed notes. Okay, so this is a quick flyby of a parabola. But let's take a look then at the next conic section, an ellipse or an oval type shape. We'll see down below that there's going to be two different types of ovals that we're going to be dealing with. Ones that are stretched more in a horizontal direction and ones that are stretched more in a vertical direction. Now, if I was to go ahead and look at the horizontal stretch, I can see that this is going to be given by the following equation. An x squared, a y squared over an a squared and a b squared, and there's a plus sign that exists in between them. This would always need to be equal to 1. In order to show that I have a larger horizontal stretch, the number a in this denominator would have to be bigger than the value of b, and here we're assuming that a is a positive value. So if this is the case, if I have a larger number underneath the x squared, that indicates that I'm going to have a larger horizontal stretch. In addition to this, the stretch that I have from the center to the edge, or what I refer to as moving along the major axis, that distance is actually that value of a. So if the value down here was 9, that would indicate that I stretch 3 units over in that direction, or there's a total axis length of 
6. If I was to go ahead and imagine here that there was a value of 25 for y, that would indicate that this value here is 5 units long, and so this vertical would stretch over a distance of 10. There's also two special points here referred to as the, uh, the two different uh, foci that I have here. Uh, and again, there's a connection between these values of a, b, and c, which determine the foci. Our goal, again, is not so much going to be to focus on the foci, but rather to just understand this equation and how I know whether it opens vertically or horizontally. Notice that if it does open vertically, I get the exact same formula, except that that big value is going to be occurring underneath y, and so I'll have a larger shift in that vertical direction. If I wanted to create a circle, a circle is actually given by this equation. And notice here I've given it an arbitrary center of h comma k. I could apply that as well to what I had up here with the ellipses. If I was to imagine an x minus h squared and a y minus k squared, I could shift the center of these. But what you'll notice here is that this is just going to be equal to an r squared. And we've dealt with formulas like this many times over. Notice, though, that if I was to divide everything through by an r squared, I get an equation that looks like this. And so this seems to represent the equation of an ellipse, only there's an equal stretch in each direction, which kind of makes sense. That's why it would be a circle. The last sort of conic section that we have is what we call a hyperbola. And hyperbolas, remember, are these kind of um, double parabola-like shapes that either open left, right, or up and down. Now, it's going to be the case that uh, my hyperbolas are always going to be given by an equation that looks something like the following. Notice this is very similar to the equation of an ellipse, except that there is a subtraction. And I get the exact same thing down in my second equation, although I have a small typo here that needs to be fixed. This should be a y squared first and then an x squared. Notice that here, a and b could be larger or smaller than one another, and that order doesn't actually matter. The way that I would notice or note whether or not this opens left or right is based on what value or what term here is positive. So since my x squared fraction is positive and my y squared fraction is negative, I know this opens left or right. Similarly down here, if this is a y squared that comes first, I know this opens up or down. Again, there are going to be two foci that are on here represented by my f1 and f2, and we're not going to be too concerned with ultimately what these points are or how we find them. So we want to understand how exactly I can graph this sort of a shape based off the given formula. Now the formula that we have here, you'll see uh, this value of a is again going to play a very, very important role because it's going to tell me how far away from center these vertices are going to be for where these parabolas actually uh, begin to start. So we're going to go ahead and actually take a look in the next video at a specific example of one of these conics and how exactly we could go and understand which conic we're looking at given a specific equation and then how to provide a rough sketch of the conic.